What's up guys, welcome back once again to the reviews. Uh, firstly, I apologise for my voice, I've got a bit of a bad throat at the moment, um, but let's get on with the video. Um, today I'm taking a look at a brand new case from Sahara Gaming. Massive thank you to Sahara Gaming for sending this out for me for review, I really appreciate it. This is the P480 um, gaming case and comes in two varieties. It comes in a completely tempered glass version and also comes in a mess, mesh front panel version as well. Um, I'm not sure if they're going to be selling this mesh panel separately, um, but they've been uh, good enough to send me a mesh panel over as well. Well, so I can take a look at that as well. Um, so we're going to go through uh, basically the features of this case today and show you what it's all about, uh, what it can do, um, sizes and things like that. Um, and then obviously uh, we we'll have a build coming in the next uh, in the next couple of weeks. There'll be a build video coming as well, so you can see what it looks like when it's built in and also how it performs in terms of thermals. Uh, so let's go on with it. So firstly, uh, as you can see, this is the case here, um, full tempered glass. Uh, panel on the front here, uh, very similar to sort of like O11 Dynamics or things like that, the way that it's designed here. Uh, glass on the front and also massive glass panel on the side. As you can probably tell from this, it is very dark tinted. Um, obviously with some nice RGB in there, it'll shine out and look really, really nice. Um, but it is a uh, dark tint on this. Um, like I said at the beginning, you can get a mesh, mesh panel that goes here as well. So you can remove this whole panel and put a mesh panel there instead if you want to, if you want some extra airflow. Um, so let's just talk around the case itself first. So this doesn't come with any uh, fans as standard. Um, I do have lots of fans from Zahara. Thank you for them for sending these out. So obviously I can do a good build of these and show you uh, the fans that uh, they've sent me as well. So let's talk about the front panel. Um, as I said, nice uh, tinted glass panel here um, or a mesh panel depending on which one you buy. Um, and then in terms of the I.O., you've got a USB-C and you've got two USB 3.2s, uh, Type A's. You've got a combined uh, headphone and a microphone jack, a reset button and a power switch, which looks like it's illuminated around the inside as well. Um, but we'll obviously, we'll see that when we're building it. Coming around to the side, as you can see, this case is very, very long. Um, it's quite it's quite short uh, that way, but long um, from front to back. Um, so, and the P480 basically means uh, it's referring to how many fans you can get in this um, from front to back. So you can get up to 420 at the, at the bottom and 420 at the top as well. Um, but we'll have a look more at the fan configurations later. Looking at the top of this case, as you can see, you've got a uh, sort of mesh panel at the top. Um, we'll have a again, look inside later so you can see uh, sort of what, what, what it looks like from inside. And um, we've got a full mesh panel there, so you've got plenty of airflow um, from there. Coming around to the back, it's a pretty much standard affair here. Um, you've got up to 140 mil fan uh, here and some ventilation here as well um, for obviously just uh, passive cooling. Um, air will can come out there as well. Uh, seven uh, PCIe slots are standard, which is very, uh, very uh, normal really for these cases. Uh, and this does have a little bit of a secret, which I'll show you in a bit. Uh, as you can see, we've got a power supply port here um, so this basically links through to your power supply there's a cable that goes from this to your power supply because the power supply is actually put in the front on this case which is very different and obviously then your IO slot is there as well coming around to the back uh, pretty much a standard panel um, but you've got ventilation here as well so you can have fans on here as well again we'll show you that when we open up the uh, the insides of it and that's pretty much all there is to show you on that side Coming down to the bottom, um, as you can see, we've got ventilation here where your fans can go for intake at the bottom and you've got a magnetic dust filter that comes off as well, which is full length, so that will cover um, both uh, all your fans down there and any intake for your uh, power supply as well. You've got a full uh, mesh uh, dust filter there as well. And also you can see your standard fit here, so it stands, I'd say roughly an inch, inch and a half from the desk, so get plenty of air in uh, from there. Now, for, for taking this one apart, um, there is no thumb screws or any for, for any of these panels on the side. Um, it's got a quite nice way of uh, taking it apart. There's a thumb screw at the back here, which you can just undo. And then once you've got that undone, you can slide the top panel back, lift that away. And as you can see, that's your top panel. There is no dust filter at the top here, but I don't think a dust filter is necessary on a top panel. Uh, in those cases, use it, and I don't really see the point because it's generally going to be used for an exhaust. Um, but it is quite a fine mesh there, so it should stop uh, a lot of dust falling in. Once you've got that panel off, you can then lift these side panels. So you can lift the glass panel away, and that just slides off there. And it is, as, as I said before, quite dark tint, as you can see the difference there. Um, quite dark tint on that glass, but it will look nice, I reckon, once, once we're built in it. And then the same again for the back panel, that just lifts off there, 
and you've got your back panel there. There is a dust filter there as well, which is also magnetic. It's taped in a standard where probably stop it from falling out during shipping, um, but it is magnetic as well. So you've got a dust filter on the back as well um, for your side intake or exhaust. In terms of taking the front panel off, it is literally just a pull. Uh, you pull that away and then you can take your glass panel off there which gives you nice access to your front fans and side fans and gives you a nice way in if you need to get round stuff, um, which is really nice. And then again, you can pull this piece off here as well, um, which is basically for like your IO, um, front IO panel. And that's obviously needs to come off in terms to be able to put your mesh panel on. So in terms of fan configurations in this case, you can get an absolute ton of fans in. I'll count them up at the end. Um, to let you know exactly how many you can get in. So let's first talk about um, how many fans you can get in and what fans you can get in. Starting from the bottom, working our way up. So at the bottom of the case, you can get up to 420 millimeter fans um, for intake uh, or exhaust if you want to do that, but that'd be weird. Um, or you can put two 140 mil fans in. At the bottom here, there's actually a, a mount here to put 140 mil fans in. Um, you could probably also get an extra 120 in as well if you put two 140s in, depending on how you want to configure this. Then moving up to the side, um, you've got this bracket here which can be moved, uh, it can be taken off completely or you can have fans on it and you can put fans or you can put fans on the side there as well instead. Um, so you've basically got two positions. I don't believe you can put, you won't be able to put basically two there and two there as well because they didn't interfere with each other, obviously the thickness of the fan. I don't know if you'd be able to do it if you got a 15mm fan or something like that, I'm not sure, but basically you've got either 220mm or 240mm fans either the front or the side. And then moving up to the top, again we've got four 120mm fans can go at the top, again up to 480mm, and or we can put three 140 mil fans at the top, um, depending on how you want to configure it and what fans you've got. And then moving on to the back, we can get 120 or 140 mil fan at, at the back as well. Now this obviously means in terms of like radiator support, um, you can go 480 at the bottom, you can probably go 480 at the top, you go 240 on the side or the front, and you can go 120 or 140 on the back as well, or you could go 280 on this side or 280 on the front if you've got one of those sort of bigger AIOs or something like that. Or you could get, uh, obviously, using 140mm fans, size radiators, you could get 520 at the top if you wanted to. Um, so there's absolutely tons of fans can go in this. So in this case, you can get up to 11 fans in it using 120mm fans and obviously less if you're using 140. Uh, I'll let you work that one out. So let's talk about the, the interior of the case as well uh, in terms of motherboard support. It is up to EATX support. As you can see, it is quite wide that way. And you've also got uh, rubber grommet pass-throughs here, um, both at the side here and on this side sort of uh, power supply mount here as well, which I'll talk about in just a second. Um, so you've got plenty of pass-through there. If you're using EATX, um, you will cover these two up here, um, but you'll still have this port here um, to basically uh, pass your cables through if you need to. And there's also a couple of holes down the bottom here for passing sort of your front panel uh, connections and things like that and fan headers and everything like that uh, through there. And you've also got a couple at the top here for passing EPS power through, um, CPU fans, that kind of thing to go through there and obviously passing other, other fans through as well. Now, as you can probably guess, with it being such a long case, um, GPU support's not going to be a problem whatsoever. And it's stated at up to a 480mm long GPU, which is absolutely insane. So even 4090s are going to fit in here, no problem. Um, that is without a radiator. Obviously, if you start putting radiators in, it is going to eke into your space a little bit uh, and reduce the, the size of graphics card, but it should be absolutely fine for pretty much any graphics card you can throw at this uh, it shouldn't be a problem whatsoever and in terms of cpu cooler if you're going to be putting an air cooler in here obviously it won't matter with an aio because they're very small anyway in terms of the pump block and um, your cpu cooler can be up to 185 mil tall um, which is going to fit most of them to be honest with you i don't see you having problems with any of the massive ones going in here it is deep enough i would say but in terms of ssd support um, as you can see you've got three sort of sleds here for two and a half inch sata drives which can be removed using these thumb screws here you can take them all off if you don't want to use them to save some space for cable management things like that um or you can obviously you can install three ssds there if you want to um so plenty of support there in terms of cable management there's a good it's a good inch to an inch and a half uh, i believe 
from the looking at it um, down the side in here is sort of some channels as well to run your cables as well, um, which will aid in your cable management. And there's uh, a few tie down ports here and there um, for tying your cables up with zip ties and things like that. Um, also has this sort of swing open. You remove three screws here and you can swing this door open um, to allow you access to your power supply port. Obviously you get an accessory box, which we'll look at in a second. Now in, this is basically where your PSU goes, um, power supply unit, uh, and this is the little bracket that comes with it. So you fix your power supply to this, and then you can just slot it into the bottom down here. This just uses two screws, and then it uh, basically slots into position. Then once you've got your power supply installed, you've got your cable here, which runs to the back here, um, as I mentioned earlier, through this uh, grommeted hole. Go straight into the back of your power supply, and that passes the power through to that port at the back. Um, so you can keep all your cables in here and route them out from there as necessary. Now in terms of the size PSU you can fit in this, it's going to be pretty much any ATX power supply um, that you can you can get really now. Uh, maybe not the massive ones, um, but pretty much any of these your standard ATX power supplies. And then you've got this, like I said, this nice sort of um, hole here to keep all your uh, cables in. Um, keep them nice and tidy and out of the way. Bundle them all up in some nice zip ties and you can be able to keep them in there. Obviously it might... Uh, restrict some of the airflow through here depending on how you bundle them up obviously because you've got to have fa if you have fans here um but if you're using the mesh front panel i'd say use the bracket at the front and use intake that way um however you've got the option there of putting some fans um also with this door there's plenty of room behind it um so you can uh, pass cables through that way and it will you can pass cables through no problem whatsoever to come through to these grommets and everything like that and then once you're happy with it you can just pack it away and shut this door back up now in terms of the accessory pack that you get you obviously get a bag full of screws and zip ties and things standoffs and everything like that um, to put your motherboard and everything and your cables in you also get two more ssd sleds as well which is really nice to see so if you're not using um, fans on the side here or even if you are you might still be able to get away with it um, you can slot these inside here and you can have two more SSDs in here as well um, so you can get a total of five say uh, 2.5 inch drives or hard drives if you want to use two and a half inch hard drives as well um, so you can get plenty of plenty of storage in here now I did mention earlier this uh, the back of this case has a little bit of a party trick so I'll show you that now Right, so the party trick I was talking about is this back um, PCIe cover portion. Um, now this, you take f five screws out of this and you can literally remove the whole thing. And then what you can do, which I think is absolute genius and I'm not sure why other companies haven't done it yet. You can flip it 90 degrees, pop it back in, and then you've got vertical GPU mounting, um, which is absolutely amazing. Um, absolute great idea so it's going to also, as well as obviously being vertical it's going to make sure it stands fo uh, as far away from the glass as possible um, for better airflow even though you've got lots of airflow from the bottom um, but you can put a vertical GPU in this as well which is absolutely brilliant this doesn't however come with a, a riser cable so you will need to purchase one of those separately now lastly let's quick, quickly talk about the mesh panel now when I do a build I am going to do testing with the mesh panel as well so we can see the difference in terms of cooling and whether it makes much of a difference or not because there's obviously a lot more, there's a lot of fans everywhere else so it shouldn't make too much of a problem um, but obviously if you're after full airflow then you get this mesh panel and this one literally just fits back into place here and that is it with the mesh panel installed and as you can see it still looks brilliant obviously being mesh it's still going to show RGB through it as well and look really nice but also give you extra airflow so that's it guys for now for this case um i've shown you basically everything about it all the features about it i believe um if there is anything i've missed then obviously let me know in the comment section below and i'll uh, get back to you as soon as i can um but that's the case um overview like i say we'll be doing a build video in this very soon um so we can see how it performs and what it looks like when it's building i am really really excited to build in this um it's going to look absolutely fantastic i know it um so i hope you enjoy this guys and i hope you uh get you interested in this case or if you're already looking at it um you might want to buy it now um but like i say if you want to stick around and, and wait for my build video then don't forget to subscribe um if you like this video please give it a like if you didn't uh, give it a dislike uh, and like i say leave any comments in the comment section below uh, and that's it guys thank you for watching and i'll see you soon